Um, so I'm Keating, um, and this is the film. We had to make a film for our, our film class, documentary filmmaking. We had to make a documentary, actually. There's me, we get sorted into teams. There's me, Boaz is also in our group, Mish, and Clay. And also Jenna, but she doesn't really count because she has like her capstone. Um, and like, and in the class, like, a, a running gag from the beginning of the year had been, like, the film department doesn't have any resources. So, uh, we're at Stony Brook University. It's super, like, STEM-focused school, and, um, there's no equipment. There's, like, no cameras, no microphones or anything. And the journalism department has, like, 30 cameras or something like that. It was, like, a joke. Like, oh, we're gonna infiltrate the journalism department. And we'll make a film about infiltrating the journalism department. And as we gain access to better technology, like, the quality of the video will get better. Then it didn't, it, we also, our professor, Kate, Professor Levitt, knows the, um, um, Kaveh Zahidi. And she showed us, like, some of his films. So we were like, we're going to do a Kaveh Zahidi style, um, process documentary. Then, like, those two things that gradually better technology and the Kaveh Zahidi thing kind of, like, didn't happen. <laughs> um, we, like, didn't really get any film for it. We actually, like, didn't do anything for, like, three or four weeks. Um, we just, like, met in the fishbowl, which is um, a room in the film department. It looks like all the chairs that exist here are just taken from different rooms throughout the building. I do sit, yeah. That... Yeah. Um, and like saw a lot of like Spanish books there and we were like, wow, there's so many Spanish books and no cameras. Interesting. So, so is there any like equipment like for film use or is this just like that room? This is just the, a room that the film department uses. I see. And it has nothing film department D in it. do much. The whole big thing is Mish is part of the Actors Conservatory, um, which is a theater club on campus, and they don't have access to the main theater on campus, which is the Stoller Center. Um, they're not allowed to do rehearsals there or put on plays there or anything like that. They literally rehearse in like hallways and shit, so they have nothing. <laughs> we're gonna, we were like, we're gonna stage a play in the Stoller Center. We're gonna break in and put one on. And then that didn't really have that we like pretended we were gonna do that and then it was like obvious it was never gonna happen though and then we were like giving updates every week in class and Kate was like okay this is all like good or whatever but like what is the emotional anchor in your film like what is why literally like why it's like oh these disparities and it's like no but like that's not enough um I don't know if we solve that <laughs> And then, um, I thought this was kind of funny. At this point, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my god, drama. Um, so, Mish had been filming, um, rehearsals. I had been filming interviews with e-board members at the Actors Conservatory. I'm Sam. I am Joshua Chachkis. And Clay had filmed an interview with Amy Gaipa, who is, um, she's a professor in the film department. Hi, my name is Amy Gaipa, and I am on the film faculty at Stony Brook. And Boaz hadn't done anything. Uh, sorry, Boaz, to out you. Um, and then Professor Levitt, <laughs> like, I was referred to it as Boaz's group, and in my head I was like, he's not doing anything. Um, again, sorry, Boaz. And then one day in class, uh, we were just like, what's the emotional anchor? And then he, like, raised his hand, and he was like, guys, I think I just figured this whole thing out. Like... It's, we, we have to go back to the Kaveh Zahidi style, like, interviews thing. And at the time, I was like, I want to punch you in the face, because, like, do you even know what our footage is? Like, do you even know if we can do that? Um, but then, now I am sitting in front of a camera doing a Kaveh Zahidi style interview, so, um... <laughs> 
I guess thank you, Boaz, and I'm sorry for being mad at you. But anyway, this is the film that we made. And it's about Hi, I'm Mish, and this is the film. Okay, so the film. What we told the class that it was gonna be about, well, we didn't really know what it was gonna be about, so we kinda came up with a bunch of different options about what it could be about and I mean one of those was uh, we're going to expose the film department for not having a lot of stuff whereas journalism department has everything and we were like well a lot of departments have a lot of high funded stuff like like I'm in the marine bio major and we have boats we have literal boats, like multiple boats, and the film department does not have a camera. So we thought that was, that, that was a cool idea, but there was nowhere to go from there in one of our class sessions where the idea of an underdog came up. Like I was talking about the production that the Actors Conservatory was going to put on because I'm the vice president of the Actors Conservatory. I was talking about how we were struggling. Our professor was like, but, but don't focus on the money, focus on like the other things. And I'm like, the other things, yeah, there, there, there are other things. Like, the school doesn't care about us, but we're putting on a play, regardless like an underdog story. So my brain was like, okay, we're just gonna roll with that. It's gonna be about the Actors Conservatory and putting on this play and everyone was down. Obviously it was a little harder for me to get footage if I was in it. Boring! It's wild to feature economical gains for the higher ups. You know, they promised me a promotion if the stock price rises 10,000% by next year. Finally, he shuts up. So I was really, really relying on Keating, Clay, and Boaz to show up and do things. And also, like, we wanted to film the show as a club for, like, just to have it on our YouTube. So I set up my camera to record the main production. Keating was like, okay, I'll come on the first day, record some backstage stuff, and she did that, and it, it was great. We got amazing, beautiful backstage footage. Then Boaz, he came to help film, but he didn't have anything to film with. I actually had to give him my phone, and then day two, we were talking. Keating wouldn't be able to come, but Clay and Boaz both said they were gonna come. And Keating said that she'd be able to give us a camera from the journalism department because she'd be upstairs in a meeting and all we had to do was text the group me, yo, can we steal a camera now? And she'd come and bring us one. So the next day, I do just that and uh, no reply. And Boaz came and I, I had gone over footage I had from the night before, and I think everything Keating did backstage, perfect. We didn't need any more. Yeah, it's everything everyone the same here. And then when we, ex we exit this side from- We run the lights back over to the other, run it after that one. It doesn't matter which side the light is on. And um, the stuff that I recorded of the actual show for my camera is good, but it was like one angle and like, there were a few things that went wrong, or a few things we missed. So it's like, Boaz, 
uh, since you basically saw the show yesterday, you know where all the cool things are that like were out of my camera range. Can you just record the show again today and make sure to get those things? And he's like, but I think I could film backstage stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but Keating filmed backstage stuff. And I, I was also doing too many things that I couldn't like form an argument and tell him we're good there. So I just surrendered my phone again. Um, so it's blacked out. So yeah, I blacked it out for your scene. I'm gonna pretend that I'm coming on. Okay. What are you doing? And also, when you think a theater production, you think like a theater with like curtains that close, where there's like wings and a whole backstage area. And the school has that. Stony Brook University has that. It's called the Stoller Center, and they have a giant, beautiful theater that we're not allowed to book. Like, everyone understands that you can't really put on shows there, but we're kind of like, it is the art center, and it is a whole stage, and there isn't much arts here, so like, why can't we put on our shows there? Like, it's a question that everybody asks. It's something that we all kind of just accept. Like, there's two rooms from the whole Stoller Arts Building, that's available to use and neither of them are the theater that you would put a play in. I think it's like, it's almost like a mythical dream at this point to put <laughs> something on because like I stepped in there and was like, oh my God, this place is huge. So automatically we don't get a theater. Instead we get the best, next best option, which is the SAC Auditorium. Um, are you excited to be in the SAC Auditorium? Yeah, I mean, it's like, I think it's the biggest stage that we ever had access to, from what I've heard mm -hmm. in the history of this club. And, no, this is an auditorium, not a theater, so it doesn't have curtains that close, and it doesn't have, like, wings on the side of the stage, you know, that, like, hide the actors once they leave the stage, so you can't see backstage stuff, doesn't have that. So what... I thought to do with my club was uh, we would make our own wings out of black felt fabric, the, the stuff that's behind me right now, and we used like a rolling clothes hangers and we just draped the felt fabric over those. And I mean, it worked. Anyone who was taller than five foot six had to crouch a little bit so they wouldn't be seen. And I mean, if you were sitting on the ends of the auditorium and not in the center seats, you could still see what's going on behind the wings. But hey, it it worked. There, there was also like a lot of other hardships. Like we would practice in the hallways because there was never really a big enough space we could book to rehearse in. Like we could we could book classrooms and stuff, but um. We're a new club and we didn't realize like how often bigger spaces are used for events, like both student run but also not student run events. So we were like, well, we want to practice. And the only time we got to practice in our actual performance space was for four hours the week before. And we didn't really even practice. We just were like, okay, this is where we're putting all the props and like marking it with like tape and stuff that they took away anyway. But um, we didn't really rehearse in our actual performance space. We rehearsed in the hallways and lobbies in like Stoller and people would just walk right through our performances because obviously they're lobbies and actively used buildings. So we'd be rehearsing really in character, and then ding ding, the, the elevator door would open and just people would like stop, look at us like we're a bunch of weirdos and then continue walking out of the building. So fun, <laughs> fun times. Um, also, we borrowed one of our, so our one of the props we needed <laughs> for the show was a dry erase board for like, it, it was a quirky, cute, like third wall 
fourth wall breaking thing. Crush or fret BFF or bed. And we asked our faculty advisor, is there a whiteboard that we could borrow? And he's like, nope. And the school wasn't really helping us buy the props we needed at the time. So um, my, like, my actors and I, we just kind of borrowed a dry erase board from the uh, fraternity room in the basement. We returned it. It got returned, but we did, without permission, borrow a dry erase board to use as a prop. That's, that's what the club does. We make things work. I think that what makes our club really special is that we can kind of just pick it up anywhere and we're really good with that. So we're always just content where we can end up being as long as we get to enjoy it ourselves and people get to see us. It's a fun time. The club is something that like people who are a part of just really love. It's, it's a passion. It's something they want to expound upon. And it's, it's just a joy to be a part of. Funding or no funding. Stony Brook help or no Stony Brook help. Hi, I am Clay. So, boys and I interviewed Professor Amy Gepa, but boys wasn't there because of the jet lag, as he told me. So, I did the interview myself. Okay, I have been talking a lot with Professor Amy Gepa. She's a really enthusiastic and nice professor working at the filmmaking department. It's very DIY. We are of a, um, uh, of a mindset in this department that you can just pick up a clip light from Home Depot. If you know the technique of how to set up three lights, how to model sort of in shape light with you know different elements, it doesn't matter if it's from Home Depot or if it's a very expensive piece that came from a, you know, a film place. Now, of course, we all want to work with really nice equipment, but we have to start somewhere. And really, for a film minor, I think it's just essential that the students can find a lamp, find this, find that, put it together, and really start to get a cinematic look from that. During the interview, she showed me a lot of instruments that we have right now, like the smartphone lenses she brought from China with expensive press from my perspective as I am from China so I know the price but it's better than nothing right she also showed showed me playing of the instruments that is coming to the department which is nice but we still can't get a camera but we have something so this is the film Hello, I'm Boaz, and this is the film. At this point, you've probably heard most of it, so I'm not going to stay too long on things you've already heard. As we did more research into the film department and we interviewed professors and we found out more about it, we realized it's actually doing really well. We're going to set up like a little studio in the fishbowl. It's called the fishbowl. And, um, you know, we've got um, clamps and we've got um, lights that are uh, lenses that can be adapted for smartphones and all sorts of different things. So I am in the process <laughs> of unpacking all of these things. I have to log everything. I have to make sure everything is is good to go. Um, I, I wouldn't say right now we have any big obstacles other than, you know, figuring out how, what's next. And I think every year we've got really great goals and we're always looking to see how we can improve and expand. They have a lot of really enthusiastic faculty. They're getting more and more resources every year. It's a young department. They only started just like, it's, it's a minor at the moment, but every year it's growing and growing. And to focus so much on the lack of cameras in comparison to other departments like journalism, it felt a little ungrateful. We switched our focus from the film department to the Actors Conservatory and the struggle of all of these students working together to put on this production. And you know, the idea of rehearsing in lobbies because they don't have a rehearsal space and having all these groups walk through as they're rehearsing was 
funny, but also kind of ridiculous at the same time. So we're like, this could work, this could work. Let's do it. We felt the Actors Conservatory would just be more interesting and uh, entertaining as a visual subject than just, you know, us talking about resources in these departments. So we started exploring that idea. Keating went and got a bunch of great interviews a while before the play of all, a bunch of the different actors. I went both nights of the play to film. I filmed the first night just from the main camera and then the second night I went and I got a lot more behind the scenes footage, you know, trying to get cool shots of like different angles. So after we shifted our focus to the Actors Conservatory, we needed to figure out how to tie it all in together. And at this point we had kind of strayed pretty far from our initial idea. We're all thinking like, oh, we have, you know, these disparities is kind of interesting, you know, putting on a play, but none of it, it didn't stick together. And then I realized, wait, it's, it's right in front of us. Let's just go back to our original idea with Kava Zahedi style and film our own testimonials throughout the process and then combine them into one film and it'll just, it'll all flow together. It's the night before we have to show something to the class and we have nothing, we just have hours and hours of footage and interviews, great interviews, but none of it like was together, none of it was cohesive. Keating came in clutch and she said she filmed her testimonial and she was gonna make a trailer for our film, you know, cause we didn't have the rest of our testimonials, the other three members of the group, me, Mish and Clay. So it didn't, we, it was just gonna be Keating's version and it was gonna act as a trailer for the film. But that isn't what actually happened. It's about midnight and Keating uploads her trailer slash testimonial. And I'm like, great, I'll give you some feedback. So I open it up, it's midnight and I'm watching and then we get to the part where she calls me out, drama. And I was salty. Functional like smartphone camera until like three days ago. So that's been one obstacle for me. B, like, I'm always in the group mate, always trying to get everyone together. <laughs> I'm literally, like, I filmed both days of the play. I wrote up updates and, like, the timeline that, like... Speak your truth, you know, boy. I've been in... I've been in... I've been in... I've been in... I will say I'm in the group chat and Boaz was reaching out I'm yesterday. I'm always, always trying to get people together. Trying to get to edit. Like literally I'm always the guy that's like, hey, let's meet up, let's meet up. Let's get together, let's work <laughs> together. He's like, can you I'm that guy, me? you know? <laughs> I might not be the best at like putting together footage, but I'm always trying to like coordinate and like be with people. So it's not, I, I do feel that I'm like, you know, you a contributing kind of like member of the group. Okay. Yeah. Did you edit this? I did not edit this. You <laughs> <laughs> can see it. Um, when I watched it last night at like midnight, I was really motivated to like create my own. <laughs> I didn't because I, felt, because I felt it might be like spiteful, right? Or, you know, just not the right energy. So, so I left it and I said, you know what, let's see how the class reacts. So we're in class and the testimonial plays and it's hilarious, you know, everybody's laughing. It's gripping, it's riveting, you could say. And slowly but surely I start to realize, you know what, this actually, this fits, this can work. You know, let's, let's try to work around this. Like we started with one idea and it, it kept morphing. So I really liked in Keating's thing, how like at the end she's like, it's about, uh, like, I think that really encapsulates the actual vibe of our film. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, can I just say, I didn't do this to be spiteful towards Boaz. Last night, I'm going to be honest, we hadn't edited anything. So <laughs> we had like hours and hours of footage. Even after all of that, I still had no idea what the narrative arc was. We were like, so <laughs> what's going to happen in class tomorrow? Um, <laughs> and <laughs> definitely Boaz was saying things. So that day I get back, I'm like, all right, I gotta film my testimonial. I gotta get cracking, I gotta get my stuff done. Um, and I film my whole testimonial. But once I start editing it, I realize that it wasn't gonna make sense. So me and Misha are talking in the group chat. We're like, are we gonna do one film or are we gonna do multiple parts with each of our testimonials? And then I, I was like, wait, if we do multiple parts, maybe, you know, Keating can go first, set the stage, 
Mish is like, I'll follow up with my perspective, my unique perspective from the Actors Conservatory, and then we'll have me and Clay go, we started realizing our film now could be even more meta than Kaveh Zahedi's film. Because it'd be like, instead of one film with the whole process, it could be the process broken down into the different perspectives, each layered on top of each other. And I thought that was a really cool idea. This is the film. And it's about figuring out what the film is about. It was amazing. I feel it went better than I thought it would. <laughs> you still have two seconds. Oh. Yeah, I'm heading out. We have a hundred people that need to come in here. Right, right now? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna pack up my stuff right now. Okay, so we're just gonna. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Sam said, I wanna be a marine bio. Sam said, I'm a marine biology major, but I, my dream is to be an actress. I thought that was the most Stony Brook thing ever.